Enigmatic North America, Chapter 13, Episode 13, Controversy and Astronomy at Ancient Mound Builder Sites. The ancient world was in tune with a force that modern man has lost touch with. There are countless examples across the worlds of ancients aligning their monuments and creations with the world above that they were constantly observing in the sky. One of the best examples of this can be found at Serpent Mound in Ohio. On June 20th, 2022, on the summer solstice eve, I had the fortune of witnessing one of the most spectacular forms of archaeoastronomy that one can observe. I flew my drone from the bank of Brush Creek to observe the spectacular alignment of the ancient mound work at Serpent Mound. I was there to capture a time lapse of the alignment of the serpent's jaw with the setting sun. I tried my best to calculate the exact moment of sunset in order to capture the entire phenomenon before my DJI Mini 3 Pro would run out of battery. As I stared at the controller screen while the time lapse took place, my jaw dropped as I witnessed the alignment of the serpent's head with the setting sun at the moment of sunset. I first found out about this event by reading Graham Hancock's book, America Before. If you're not aware of who Graham Hancock is, he's a famous author and researcher of ancient history who recently has been vindicated after decades of accusations of pseudo-history for some of his theories. Many of these ideas revolve around the idea of lost civilizations and an ancient cyclical reset of humanity. In his book, America Before, Graham points out many examples that show the possibility that humans have been in the Americas far longer than mainstream academia are willing to admit. Many of Graham's theories are starting to be proven plausible, with new evidence of ancient cataclysms nearly 12,000 years ago, as well as more evidence of an ancient human past in the Americas that far exceeds the current estimates of 14,000 years by mainstream archaeologists. During a recent appearance on Joe Rogan's podcast, Graham announced that he had been banned from filming at Serpent Mound for his Netflix show, Ancient Apocalypse. Graham claimed that he had initially been given permission, but they later found out that he was the host of the show. The reason for the ban apparently had to do with Graham's theories about the site's age, which contradicts the prevailing beliefs among the Ohio Historicalist Society that manages the site. There's long been an argument about whether the more recent Fort Ancient Culture or the more ancient Adena Culture built Serpent Mound. Graham Hancock proposes the idea that both of these cultures reconstructed and rebuilt the structure that had already been there from a previous age. In 2014, William Romain and colleagues put out a paper titled A New Multi-Stage Construction Chronology for the Great Serpent Mound, USA, where they show that the mound was originally built 2,300 years ago during the older Adena culture and that it was reconstructed 1,400 years later by the Fort Ancient culture. It wasn't until 1987 that anyone made the connection that Serpent Mound was an archaeoastronomy site marking the summer solstice. This discovery was made by two researchers, Clark and Marjorie Hardman. Because the Earth does not rotate perfectly on its axis, it goes through a cyclical cycle of precession. This means that the setting sun would not have always been exactly where it is today on the summer solstice. 2,000 years ago, the summer solstice sunset would have been about three sun diameters south of the horizon in alignment with the serpent. In his book, America Before, Graham Hancock explains the four logical conclusions that present themselves as a result of this information. Option 1. The builders were very poor astronomers, and they had never intended to orient the serpent with summer solstice at all. Option 2. The Hardmans were right in their general thesis about the alignment at the mound with the setting sun, but had gotten their observation point and sight line wrong. Option 3. The alignment had not been made 2,000 years ago, but far long ago. After doing the math and observing the obliquity cycle, If there was an intention for the builders of Serpent Mound to create a solstice marker, and the builders successfully did so in alignment with the sunset on that date, then that would put the original construction of the serpent to around 11,000 BC. This is all very speculative, but it's not outside the realm of possibilities. Dates like these make archaeologists uncomfortable as any time old age is hypothesized in ancient American history, it's often immediately dismissed. Examples of this can be found at Huayotlaco in Pueblo, Mexico, where human artifacts that dated to a minimum of 250,000 years were discovered and subsequently covered up. There were many different mound building cultures. The one we just talked about at Serpent Mound is in Ohio. But at Poverty Point, Louisiana, you can find some more very interesting solstice and equinox markers. The ancient mound at Poverty Point has long been shrouded in mystery and enigma. Archaeological findings from Washington University in St. Louis have shed new light on one of the first civilizations of America, revealing that Native Americans who occupied the region over 3,000 years ago were not merely simple hunter-gatherers, 
but rather skilled engineers capable of constructing massive earthen structures that withstood the test of time. The construction of these mounds is nothing short of remarkable. Built by what archaeologists believe to be hunter-gatherers, without the luxury of modern tools, domesticated animals, or wheeled carts, the Poverty Point World Heritage Site consists of a 72-foot tall earthen mound and concentric half-circle ridges constructed from nearly 2 million cubic yards of soil. The structures have held together for over 3,000 years, a testament to the sophistication of the ancient engineers who built them. The site is composed of six concentric C-shaped ridges, each of which is separated from the next. When I traveled to Poverty Point in the summer of 2020, these rings were still very easy to see from the vantage point of my drone. The ridges measuring anywhere from 10 to 185 centimeters in height were once even taller, but have been worn down over the past 150 years from agricultural plowing. The immense scale was only discovered when researchers analyzed aerial photographs, revealing the intricate geometric designs. Radiocarbon dating indicates that the majority of the ridges were constructed between 1600 and 1300 BC. One of the most fascinating aspects of Poverty Point is the speed at which these structures were constructed. According to lead author and anthropologist Tristan R. Kidder, the construction of the site was likely completed in a matter of months, possibly even weeks. Building structures out of dirt is more complex than one would think, and these ancient engineers were able to construct massive earthworks with very sophisticated technical knowledge. Poverty Point is believed to have been an important religious site where Native Americans came on pilgrimages. The structures were abandoned abruptly between 3,000 and 3,200 years ago, possibly due to documented flooding in the Mississippi Valley and natural climate change in the region. Kidder and his team reevaluated a site on Ridge West 3 at Poverty Point, originally excavated by renowned archaeologist John Gibson in 1991. The ridges at Poverty Point contain vast amounts of artifacts around the edges and within, suggesting that people lived there. Using modern research methods, including radiocarbon dating, microscopic analysis of soil, and magnetic measurements of soil, the research provides a conclusive evidence that the earthworks were built rapidly, with no evidence of boundaries or signs of weathering between the various levels. It is believed that the construction was completed in lifts or layers of sediment deposited to increase the ridge height and linear dimensions before another layer was placed to expand the footprint vertically and horizontally. The construction at Poverty Point would have required 53 million cubic feet of dirt being moved. That's over 38,000 dump trucks worth of dirt. All of this being done by what appears to be hunter-gatherers. There appears to be a level of sophistication that hunter-gatherers had which was not originally credited to them. There's evidence that shows Poverty Point is also the world's largest known solstice marker. Archaeoastronomers Kenneth Brecher and William Hagg are the first people to have brought this idea to the public. With the concentric rings, the shape of the settlement is unlike any in the United States. Hagg and Brecher made several calculations which show intentional building efforts to orientate the different avenues throughout the site. Archaeologist William Romain and Norman L. Davis have some amazing LiDAR images that highlight different solstice and equinox markers as well. The reader is encouraged to look these up online. The alignment from the center of these concentric ridges with the mound C to the northeast is aligned with the summer solstice sunrise at 61.1 degrees. Directly to the east of this centerpiece of the concentric rings is where the sunrise can be viewed on the fall and winter equinox. To the southeast of the center is Mound D, and this alignment between Mound D and the center is where the sunrise of the winter solstice can be viewed. Building such enormous mounds and ridges at Poverty Point would have required a large labor pool that was well organized and would have required leadership to execute. Hunter-gatherers were originally believed to shun politics, but the speed of the excavation and construction combined with the quantity of earth being moved indicate that the Native Americans who built these structures were working in concert. The findings challenge previous beliefs about how hunter-gatherers behaved and lived. There are more examples of mound builder astronomy throughout the country, including one particular symbol which looks very familiar. In the woods of north central Missouri on a rock overhang near a small creek exists a petroglyph of a carved hand that appears to have an eye within it. The carving is one part of a larger panel that is harder to make out with the naked eye. When I went out to see the petroglyph, I had little to no information on the specific area where I could find it. After hiking for 2.5 hours and closely examining the walls of the many rock overhangs in the forest, I finally arrived at this incredible rock art that still has visible red paint within it today. Hey everyone, 
I've been hiking for the last two and a half hours, maybe a little longer in these Missouri woods, and I have found it. Here's the Hamza. That's what I'm calling it anyways. This is a petroglyph of a hand with an eye inside of it. February is a good time of the year to come. No ticks out here right now. There are some hunters though. Been hearing gunshots nearby all day. Incredible petroglyph. Curiously, the Missouri woods are not the only place in the world you can find this eye in the hand symbol. In the old world, this symbol represents the Hamza, which is a mystical and enigmatic emblem that has transcended borders, holding deep spiritual significance in many cultures around the world. The symbol represents the protective hand of a divine force that has been used throughout history to ward off malevolent forces and attract good fortune, prosperity, and happiness. The all-seeing eye in the center of the Hamza hand is a representation of divine watchfulness, offering guidance, protection, and wisdom to those who seek it. It's found in Jewish, Islamic, and Christian traditions, as well as Hinduism, Buddhism, and Paganism. The Hamza handle is often referred to as the Hand of Fatima, or the Hand of Miriam, and its use dates back to ancient times. It's often worn as jewelry or displayed in homes for protection, but does it have the same meaning in the Americas? The Moundville Archaeological Site in Alabama is home to many fascinating stone discs, with two of the most famous showing the eye and the hand symbol. The first disc was discovered by a farmer plowing his field in Moundville and was later given as a gift to Professor E. A. Smith, the state archaeologist of Alabama. It now resides in Jones Archaeological Museum at the Moundville Archaeological Park. One of these discs, made of sandstone and measuring 12 and a half inches in diameter, features an intricate design of two intertwined rattlesnakes surrounding a well-drawn hand with an open eye in its palm. In the Tuscaloosa News article, The Mystery of the Rattlesnake Disc, archaeologist Ben Knight explains that many people believe the eye in the hand symbol is a portal for another world. While researching the eye in the hand symbol, I stumbled across a tweet from Dr. Gregory Little, a leading expert in mound builder symbolism, which stated that the eye in the hand symbols found at Moundville and elsewhere were not the same as a Hamza, and that the symbol actually represents an Oji from Orion's Nebula. This intrigued me and I bought Dr. Little's book, Path of Souls, to learn more. The book is a very entertaining and thought-provoking read that covers topics such as Native American symbolism, religion, archaeoastronomy, and even controversial topics such as 19th century newspaper reports of giant skeletons. In this book, Little describes the OG as an opening in the sky which symbolizes a path of souls as it leaves this world through the OG on its way to the Milky Way. Think of the OG as a split in the fabric of the physical world and an opening to the spiritual world. He believes the hand is likely a constellation that Native Americans recognized as the hand. The same stars that form this constellation are forming the belt of Orion. There are a number of other cosmology beliefs and customs that are similar to those in ancient Egypt and elsewhere throughout the world. Path of Souls is quite possibly one of the single greatest breakdowns I have read about the Native American beliefs regarding cosmology, and I highly recommend that the reader investigate further. Please subscribe to my channel, ring that notification bell, and be sure to stay tuned for Chapter 14, Episode 14, The Legend of Giant Humans in North America. Did the Smithsonian cover up giant skeletons? That is quite a long title, but <laughs> I wanted to make it clear what the chapter was all about. In this uh, chapter, in this episode that's coming up, we're going to dive deep into the claims and the stories of different giant skeletons being discovered. Back in the 1800s, you had thousands of publications reporting these giant skeletons being found in mounds, burial sites all over North America, including the New York Times and many other established media organizations. We're going to take a deep dive. If you'd like to support my work, please consider buying my book, Enigmatic North America, Legends, Oddities, and Controversial History. You can also check out the playlist where I have all my episodes where you can watch them for free. I really hope you're enjoying this channel. Thanks so much for the support. Thanks so much for subscribing, and if you really enjoyed this episode, please like, subscribe, and share with someone you think might find this interesting. Until next time, everybody, take care.